It's always a bit weird on a Zoom, isn't it, at the beginning? She had that weird, like, you know, foggy background thing on, like, blur effect or something. She had very blonde hair and a very big fringe, I remember, and a very buttery voice. How would I describe it? Soft maternal, like, very motherly. But there, there was a distance to it. Like, I knew she was open to labelling things. It wasn't just a normal conversation. It kind of all happened at the same time. Being told it by a professional and realising it within myself. The moment it clicked was when she just stole the words completely out of my mouth. And I was just reduced to tears. I was like, I've gone through 21 years of my life and nobody's ever understood me. How can a stranger understand me more than anybody else, apart from my mum, in, in, in an hour and a half call than how I feel by 90% of people in my life? To the outsider, I'm one of the most unpredictable people you can meet. <laughs> I'm a bit of a liability. Where my mind is racing too quickly. I feel like Super Mario Man. Like da -da 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 The way I go through the world is incredibly stressful and exhausting. And I feel like I'm running to stand still. And I thought everybody was like that. I genuinely am the busiest person I know. And I'm running at 100 miles an hour all the time. I like to think of life as spinning plates. You know, you've got like your health plate, your work plate, your friends plate. My friends plate is always the one that's looking the worst. Like, I don't know why people go to sit round. I'm like, what are you chatting about? Do you go on Google and like write like conversation starters? I guess if I'm being honest, I have been able to swaggle things through talking my way in and out of them and kind of how I've been able to keep people at such distance because I'm so good at camouflaging in a way that you'd never know. And I think only with my kind of very good questioning, I like my aim in life is to be a great listener, but a better questioner. And that way, nobody can ever touch you. I will let you down in that we'll make plans and I may have had a meltdown or be in the middle of a meltdown. And as much as I want to be there for you right now, I'm like, I can't. I'm lying on the floor trying to bring it together. I don't know how to say I'm not okay because I'm disappointing you. I wasn't seeking anything. I was just seeking understanding and perhaps understand who I am a little bit more and how I fit in the world or perhaps why I feel like I don't belong. I never would have located those problems in the neurodivergent world. I just thought that, in truth, I thought everybody was like this. She was like, Asper Asperger's, and I was like, like, and, like, <laughs> what about it? I'm 99% sure you have Asperger's. My mind races at 150 miles an hour. But I was mute. I remember this almost vertigo and I just zoomed away from my screen and I was in this very claustrophobic room in the study. And I remember just staring at the keyboard, at the computer, but feeling 100 miles away. It was like a knife through butter. It just cut me and I froze and I really don't have these still moments of stillness much. And I, I, I just lingered in this space and I was like, my gravity's changing right now and I don't know where I'm going. I just felt like I was falling and falling and falling, but there was nothing I could do. So I was just silent. I never even heard of the word neurodivergence. And from my understanding, girls didn't have autism or Asperger's. You're not allowed. <laughs> it's not in the playbook. 
and that was when she really began joining the dots going like have you had eating problems like your questions how do you find relations with other people it was it's really confrontational she was like i think your colorful language is you're like chameleon but you miss social cues So after I had this absolute enlightenment moment, and for once I feel like someone, someone understands me, she goes, by the way, this isn't formal. <laughs> it's, it's not formal. I didn't understand the weight that I had at the moment. I think I was still in the very kind of euphoric, wow, kind of I have a story, I can place myself in the world. But on paper, none of this happened. I sat with my mum and we made like a skeleton text going, I am i don't know if I'm ready to talk about this, but I think you need to know. Or I sent videos. I sent YouTube videos. Grandma wouldn't talk to me. Mum told grandma. But then she came around and it was really sweet. I really bonded with her over Desert Island Discs and she went and found all the autism Desert Island Discs and sent them to me. One of the saddest bits of the spectrum is yes, you know, everybody's on the spectrum is different and it manifests in all these different colours but there's, there's no template. I think there's a pointlessness to me telling people because people have an idea of what it looks like. And I'm not that. <laughs>